I think you make your own opportunities. There's always something, there's always a way in. I mean, I was from this tiny little town and I could have been like, there's no hope for me. I was doing talent shows in a local shopping mall, you know, like whatever. I would have sung anywhere or taken any opportunity. I think that you have to be hungry and you have to reach out. And my mum wouldn't let me get an acting agent, so I got on a train and went to Sydney and got one myself, you know. So you have to have that tenacity. But first and foremost, you have to believe in yourself because if you, if you don't have that fire, nobody else is going to believe in you or buy into that either. The, I'm, my gift is com being a communicator. So I feel like there's the tone of my voice and how I communicate how I'm feeling is what lands. And I've had to learn that that's my gift and that's valid. Like I don't need to, it doesn't need to be this or that or the best songwriter or... See, I'm not a musician, I don't play an instrument. But once I got comfortable with what my unique gift is, it made everything so much better because I wasn't trying to be something that I'm not. You just, you just never know what is around the corner when you make these changes. We all get so scared to make a change. And, and beautiful things happen when you just, when you liberate yourself to let go of everything and go, well, I'll just quit music. It still found its way back to me. I would never have thought I could be sat here now confidently with this body of work. No way. It just didn't seem possible, but it was the courageous step to accept that I didn't know what I wanted to do and the confidence grows over time. Started when you were 16. I mean, you left school, went into a soap opera at 16. Like, what was that like to be that young, taking such a bold move? It's quite bizarre. Um, I often wonder about what I was like at that age when I see my niece at the same age and I, I try and imagine her doing what I did. For me, I, I was in a very small town. I didn't have showbiz parents, but from a very young age, knew that I wanted to, what I used to call be a star. I used to say to my mum, I want to be a hairdresser through the week and a star on the weekends. Where does that come from? And that was at the age of three. So I was singing into my hairbrush at a very young age and, you know, had these dreams that were kind of outside anything I would have access to. So I wrote a list in my bedroom and I remember saying I was going to be on Neighbours, E Street or Home and Away, the three main soap operas in Australia. Because that was an out. I'd seen other people do it. I knew it was possible. So, and then I was like, I'm going to then be a movie star and then I'm going to make albums. I can't remember which order those last two were in, but I wrote it down. And I think a lot of people do this as a way of affirmations or, you know, making things happen. In my own little way, I guess, um, I didn't question it. It was just going to happen. And I don't know if that's because it was destiny or if there is something to what you believe you make happen. So I just got a guest appearance on one of those shows and they offered me a full-time role. And I said to my parents, I'm going. I'm going, I'm moving to Melbourne. Please don't try and stop me. <laughs> so basically I was a nightmare child <laughs> for my parents who were probably terrified and both had jobs and were busy and you know would not be able to drop everything and come and take care of me in Melbourne. And I was like, I got this, you know. No fear? No fear. No fear. I didn't know how to pay the phone bill. I had to ring my mom. I was like, how do I, I these things come in? I'm not quite sure. So obviously there were practical things. I don't know. I think it's, it set me in good stride for, for the path I've chosen, you could say. I went to England to do pantomime. Australian soap stars do. They go and do a pantomime, make some money and come back to be actors in Australia. So it's a way of like funding being an out of work actor. And that's, that's what took me to, to the UK in the first place. And I did this pantomime, I played Snow White in Canterbury. <laughs> and then I just saw this whole other world. And, you know, for an Australian who's, you know, going to Europe and seeing, I was like, wow, there's this whole world out there. 
so I think that's what enticed me and I, I just thought I've got to move to the UK that was the motivation and then I got there and I was very famous because Neighbours was two years behind so I had a bit of time you know so I was getting paid to do appearances and I was trying to get acting work and I couldn't get a job so I went you know I went there with opportunity and the opportunities dwindled and the money ran out and that was a scary time and that's when I started songwriting you have to believe in yourself because if you if you don't have that fire nobody else is going to believe in you or buy into that either and it's a difficult industry so you have to also have a very thick skin you have to be prepared for rejection and you have to this is why i always quote this book the surrender experiment because i think it's a really good a really good one for viewing things that seem a seemingly disasters and we all go through periods where these kind of things happen as opportunities like okay why would this be happening what's on the other side of it instead of seeing it i mean i had writer's block i'm a singer for more than 5 years and for a while that swallowed me up and i hid behind that and i did other things and i found ways around it but then when when i hit it head on and i found a way through it i've written the best album of my career in my opinion and i've had the most fun i've been in flow it's like i can do no wrong and i think a lot of what changed for me was how i felt about myself the willingness to fail the willingness to apply a discipline with something that you could say oh it's just creativity and it's like well there's still a discipline you have to show up you have to be willing to write some bad songs to get the good song I think it was during that time where you were putting out hit movies and hit albums and you said during that period for for a part I was successful, rich and terribly unhappy. Can you tell us about the emotion you were feeling when when you would have said a quote like that? Um I can't even remember when I said that, but I think it's it's true to say there've been the periods of my life where I've been the most successful and I've had more money than I have now and I have been unhappy. Um I think something I've learned is the more you have doesn't mean you know the happier you are or it just more things need more problems and more things to manage um so <laughs> I remember having a second home in LA and trying to be JLo I was like what am I doing I can't afford to be doing this but it's easy to sit there and kind of tell somebody else about that when they haven't had the chance to experience that. All I know is that because I've been blessed to have some of those opportunities, um the gift of that is I don't need those things. And living simply um there's a lot to be said for it. And there's a lot to be said for it because it frees up a lot of space to do things that do make you happy. If you could speak directly to somebody who's who is struggling with their confidence, what would you say to them? I would say you're not the thoughts in your head. They're just thoughts. You can make up new ones. You can you, the, the mind do something with your hands. Go outside, walk, exercise. The thing is the mind's nature is to turn in on itself. And if you just let it run away with itself, it'll drive you mad. So, it this is a work in progress. This is not something you just overcome. You have to find tools whether it's meditation, whether it's you know writing down negative thought patterns and creating more positive ones like whatever you need to do to recognize you're just spiraling and we do it all the time and it is a practice and so i have to even myself catch myself being really negative about things and um it also depends on how you were brought up were you a glass half empty family were you a glass half full family like what's your coping strategies in life you know do you catastrophize like I I my mother did that so I often I have to fight against going oh my god it's going to be a disaster <laughs> I also got my discipline from my mother though so she there was a lot of good that I got from from the strength of my mom but you know it's just finding ways to work with the mind the mind can can be a great help um if you can figure out ways to stop it 
taking over. <laughs> and it's okay to, to have periods where you're just living, you know. I think we, we, we're in a world where it's like, do, do, create, and it's like, well, not everybody is built that way. Some of us move a bit slower, we're a bit more fragile, we need time, you know, to just, just kind of, life can be tough. So I don't think there's one mold for one person and you've got to be okay. I mean, I'm clearly a turtle. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of years between albums, but turtles win the race. So, you know, it's not about the amount that you do. It's just about the care that you take with what you do, I think.